Come up with a list. A list of movies that have the perfect sequel. There's a handful of movies you can find with that perfect sequel. Captain America, Winter Soldier. I had to think there for a moment. The Empire Strikes Back. Perfect sequel. What's another one out there? It's like the sequel was Terminator 2. Perfect sequel. This movie right here, Catching Fire. The Hunger Games Catching Fire that came out in 2013 is the perfect sequel. It is in that list of movies where the sequel is better than the first one. And on this episode of Movie Breakdowns, we're going to talk about it. What's up world? Welcome to the episode of Movie Breakdowns. I'm your host, Ali Zaka. And before I get started as a review, what you want me to do, let me know. Please put in the conversation below and I get to as best I can. Also, the Patreon, Patreon slash Ali Zaka for $2 a month. You cut in front of everybody to get your review out. Right before it comes out on Facebook and YouTube, you also get trade reactions, much more content on there. Before it comes out on YouTube and Facebook, and just other thoughts and stuff like that on the Patreon. Now, let's go ahead and get to today's episode 2013's Catching Fire, or Hunger Games 2. And... This is gonna be a spoiler review. See, I've seen this movie. Go watch it. It's been out for almost a decade now, nine years at this point, 2022, 2013. And I actually read the book Catching Fire before watching this movie. I actually read it halfway through The Hunger Games one, and then watched the movie. I never finished Mockingjay. I never got to the third one. But this one right here, from what I remember from the book, and then watching the movie back when I first watched, it, I was like, man, this movie follows the book perfectly. And watching it back again. It is solid. It is a solid sequel. The only problem is for me in this movie is that the movie is 2 hours and 26 minutes long. It didn't need to be 2 hours and 26 minutes. It could have been 2 hours and perfectly fine. But it was all for a setup. And what is this movie about? Well, after the events of the first Hunger Game where PETA and Katniss survived the Hunger Game by playing, like, cheating the system by saying, you know, we're in love and they decided they're going to kill each other off. But Seneca, Seneca, Seneca did decided to throw the rule out and let there be two winners for the first time ever. Well, those actions and basically what Katniss did in that first one with the three things, the three fingers and the signal, and everything, she was giving rise to the rebellion, whether or not she knew she was doing it or not. And in this sequel, President Snow is trying to find a way to stop the rebellion from uprising and at the same time turn Katniss into one of the capital's own, make her like one of their people, but it's not going according to his plans. So he decided to have a 75th Hunger Games where he brought back all the winners and had to face each other all out, face each other all off again in a battle to death. And that's pretty much the Hunger Games too. It's like the winners get put back into the Hunger Games, so they gotta fight their way out of it. But while that's going on, the sub the subplot or the B plot is that the uprising from other districts are finally coming up to play, and you not know, get to just like hear about it, you get to see about it. When Katniss and Peter goes touring their victory tour, as they call it, to other districts, other districts are sitting there, like doing a cry for help, doing like Katniss, we're with you, and Peter not knowing it, he also does the, the hand sign, and so they're showing like they're like, against the. They're against the people, against the people of the system. They're against the capital. They're going against it. Where not Peter and Katniss knew they was planting the seeds of rebellion, they started the rebellion. And President Snow sees it and he's trying to end it, but he can't end it. And you get to see people in this movie get shot. People in this movie get murdered, beat up, whipped. Like this movie is very brutal. <laughs> from watching the movie again, if this movie's rated what PG thirteen, and I just remember looking at, it, I was like, they just really executed a man point blank, and I just remember like a kid watching this movie thinking, yeah, man, this is not really a kids movie like I thought it was. This movie is great. I love this movie. I love the whole build up to the rebellion and seeing people rise up and seeing cat people like people see Katniss and. Peter has hope. They're like, you know what? You guys cheated the system. You guys beat the system. We can too. We don't have to stay like this. And bringing back the past victors into it all and seeing them all join in and say, like, we don't want to be a part of it. We want to fight the system as well was kind of cool. Like, most of the times you get movies where something happens and the the new protagonists come in, they go through the, the trials and tribulations and win, but you never hear about the previous victors from previous years. Like, you never see what they did. You might get one or two, but you don't get 
a handful of them. In this movie, you got the handful of victors coming back, and they're all like, you know what? Let's stick it to the man. And there's one character in this movie that I truly love, who she was like, at every opportunity, was taking a shot at the man. And I thought that was cool in this movie. I was like, oh, look at that. We got a character who's like, no matter what, she's like, I right, screw this, screw y'all, screw this, come at me, I'm ready to go, let's fight it out. Like, I just love the dynamic of this movie and the buildup of the rebellion, the buildup of like the little C sewing, the storyline, the plot, what gets me, the plot in this movie. I freaking love it. I love the plot, the music, and then when it comes to the Hunger Games itself, the idea of the clock. It's a genius idea that like the it's an island it's surrounded by a forest or the beach and in the middle of the, it's a giant lake or you're going to say a lake or let's say a lake, a giant lake and then the middle of the lake is like a rock formation and then it's a pattern that leads out like a giant clock and it spins. You can spin the rock formation, but every hour something happens in one of these spots of the clock dial. So, for example, if one o'clock, it might be fog and then two o'clock might be bamboos or bamboos, baboons. And then three o'clock, it might be a giant wave. Like, so you have to find a way to, to survive a clock formation and also outlast the 24 people who are trying to kill you. And there's also team ups in this movie. Like Finnick is one of my favorite characters. He's kind of like a, a swimmer, kind of like he's a trident, kind of like an Aquaman slash Poseidon character. Think he's a cool dude. Peter actually steps up in this movie. He kind of gets like a, a set. He finally has a set and he's not willing to back down for anybody. Like, I enjoyed the character development in this movie. I enjoyed the storyline in this movie. Katniss is the only one who I would say in this movie didn't really like grow. She's still the same character in the first movie. She's still kind of like standoffish, don't really be about anybody. And then you, you see her kind of fall for Peter a little bit throughout this movie where she f has feelings for him. And you can see like, oh, the guy who gets shunned by the girl that he really likes finally gives in to him, which you're kind of like, eh. I don't like sure I really like that. Like it's an overdone storyline, but you know what? It's, it's a movie, it's go for it. And the book is the same way, where Katniss finally like, she kind of likes him, you know, she likes another dude named Gail, who is Thor's younger brother in this movie as well. Uh, she finally, like, she likes Gail, but she's starting to have feelings for Peter as well. And there's times I'm watching, like, oh, Peter finally think he's winning. Peter finally think he's winning. Peter finally got Katniss laying down and cuddling, cuddling him in bed. Like, this man's, he's finally winning. <laughs> but I enjoyed this movie. I think this movie's a fun movie. It's great. I love the buildup. I love the storyline and you get to see not just hear about the rebellion but you get to see about the uprisings and the districts fighting back and they show it to you versus just saying it like you see it through like TV and, and cameras or you see it actually take place and you get to see Peter and Katniss reaction to stuff phenomenal phenomenal other things I liked in this movie was the music I like the CGI the CGI still holds up still looks pretty good the the thought process process behind it. And I like the fact that we get to see Katniss and Peter also deal with trauma, PTSD from the first one. A lot of times you watch sequels, the main characters don't really have PTSD from the events they experience. Like they're going from a, a mundane life to a whole new life to a whole new world based on the events they had in the first movie of anything. And they don't really like trigger anything in the second movie. They don't really like, like freak out about it. like Iron Man 3 looking back on it, what people would say about that movie it was kind of cool seeing Iron Man deal with the issues of aliens and trying to figure that out and navigate through that well I love the fact that Katniss sometimes will have reactions and sometimes have images of the events in the first Hunger Game it's cool seeing that it's cool seeing the characters deal with their own mental health and movies and see that like yeah what I went through was traumatic I'm trying to go through this and try to wave it, wave through it, and try to get over this. And when I think I'm out of the out of the woods, I get pulled back into the forest. And I love it. I love it. My only nag on this movie is that it's 226 minutes long, and it feels long at certain spots. Matter of fact, you don't get the introduction of the 75th Hunger Games until 40 minutes into the movie, and then you have an hour and 38 hour 13 minutes I believe or was it hour 30 minutes left of 
wait, we still have a whole nother movie, pretty much. I once it was an hour and 13 when I paused. I was like, where are we at? 48 minutes, an hour and 13 minutes left. It was an hour and 13 minutes. I was like, oh man, we 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 just now really taking off. We we just now, we were almost at a two-hour mark, and we just now taking off to the Hunger Games. Like, and then the Hunger Games kind of go by really quick. It's not dragged out as it was in the first one because of the fact that everybody's teaming up, because of the fact that it's moving more about the uprising and the start of it in the 75th Hunger Games, the way to get Katniss out of the capital and get her as the image of rebellion that the District 13 and everybody want her as, as the districts want her as. They want her to become their pretty much her spokesperson, her figurehead, whether they she knows it or not, she is coming their public figure there for the rebellion, their symbol of hope, whether that she knows it or not. And I enjoyed this movie. I thought it was fun. I thought it was a good movie. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Just the the time, the length of it was my own egg. My only egg. Alright, let's kinda of talk about the box office and details of this movie. So like I said, the Hunger Games came out. Well, Home Game Catching Fire came out in 2013. It's 226 minutes. PG-13 movie. The director is Francis Lawrence. The writers is Simon Bufoy, who wrote the screenplay, as well as Michael Arnett, who wrote the screenplay, and then Susan Collins, who wrote the book Catching Fire. Then the box office for this movie. The budget was a hundred and. $130 million estimate, it grossed worldwide $865 million. They got their money back. They did bank on this. And the cast, you have Jennifer Lawrence as Katniss Everdeen. I think Jennifer Lawrence is still great as Katniss. Like, she embodies Katniss. She goes 100 I feel like, to me, she wins 110% in this movie. As far as the rest of the cast, they all go 110% into the character. Jennifer Lawrence is great as Katniss. Josh Hutchinson, who plays PETA Meadowlark, I thought he did a great job as PETA. He, he's a character in this movie where Josh does a good job showing PETA has a set now. PETA's willing to step up and fight for things. He went to the first home game. He's no longer the scared little boy. He's now the boy who's like, you know what? I'm going to fight for what I want to fight for. This is mine. I'm reaching out for, I'm going to protect Katniss because I still love her. Whether or not she loves me back or not, I got this. I'm going to do this while I can. I'm going to fight off what I need to fight off. We'll get this taken care of. Liam Hemsworth, who plays Gale, he's more of a figure in this movie. In the second one, the first one, he's kind of like there, but in this one, he's definitely like somebody who's also after Katniss Everdeen. He wants to be part of Katniss' life. He's like her really good guy friend, but also wants to be her boyfriend from back home. And he also helps with the rebellion back home as well. You have Philip Seymour Hoffman, who plays um, Heavensby. He replaced um, Cinna or Seneca, I can think of his name right now, from the first movie. He is now the new game director and the game head of the game. And he has a different motive in this movie. I'm not going to let you know what it is. You have to go watch it, figure out what he is really about. But he comes off as somebody who's kind of like calculative and plot and stuff as well. Woody Harrelson, who played Haymitch. Woody Harrelson's great. Solid. Phenomenal. I have nothing bad to say about him. Just solid. Donald Sutherland, who played President Snow, he was menacing. Sutherland did a good job being that menacing character who was like, okay, I don't know if I trust him, what he's up to. The dude was on a whole nother level. Good job. Elizabeth Banks, who played Effie Trinket, she's amazing in her position. Lenny Kravitz, who played Cinna. There's a Cinna and I think the other guy is Seneca. But Cinna, Lenny Kravitz is great as well. Stanley Tucci as Caesar. Phenomenal, amazing. Pretty much just going through the whole cast. Like, everybody's great. Everybody's solid. Sam Clafton, who plays Finnick. I thought he did a good job as Finnick. Lynn Cohen, who played Max. Great as well. Jeffrey Wright as BT. Amazing. I thought he did a good job. Uh, Amanda Plummer as Wires. Great as well. This cast is solid. It's like a really great cast here. And where is she? Jenna Malone, who played Johanna Mason. Jenna Malone is probably my favorite character in this movie. Her and Finnick are my two favorites. And she, her attitude, the feistiness she brings to that character, the character who like, I don't care, do what I want. 
like screw it, screw the rules. Like Jenna does a great job being Johanna to life. I, I freaking apply Jenna in this movie. Great for her. There is one more guy. And that's because he plays Fat Castle in Blue Mountain State. And what is his name? Alan Richson. Alan Richson, who played Thad Castle, he's in this movie as one of the guys from um, Area 1 or District 1 in Catching Fire. And anytime I see him, all I just think is Thad Castle. And he couldn't say sad. He always kept saying fad. So that's why you get the name Thad Castle. But yeah, no, I just think it's I just think it's great that the Alan Richardson Thad Castle is in this movie as gloss and that's all. I think that's it. Yeah, that's the cast. That's the main cast. I think they're a phenomenal, great acting all around. Just good job. Superb. Any other thoughts? No. I think this movie's a solid movie. That's in the Laurent Town a little long. That's it. Is it a Friday night movie? Yes, it's a Friday night movie. Devil's a Friday night movie and great time. I'm going to grade the movie, The Hunger Games Catching Fire from 2013. I'm going to give this movie a solid B+. This movie gets 89% for me. It's a fun movie, phenomenal across the board. I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's an A movie. I think it's a little short of an A, 89% versus a 90. The run time, 2 hours and 26 minutes, is definitely long, but it definitely sets up everything that's coming up next. It plays off the first one really well. It's a good middle movie, a great sequel, phenomenal. I enjoy this movie. I just I don't think it's an A. I just don't think it's an A. Let's see here. IMDb gives the movie a 7.5 out of 10. That is a solid C. And Ryan Tomatoes give this movie a a 90%. The critics give this movie a 90%. That's an A minus. And the audience give this movie an 89%. That's a B plus. So I'm right there with the audience on this movie. It's a B plus. Like it's a solid sequel. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the next movie has. I actually have seen the, the, the third one, but I haven't seen the fourth one. So this is my first time actually finishing this series, but I'm excited. Yeah, so you guys seen Catching Fire from 2013. What did you think? Please put in the comment section below. Other than that, see you guys next episode with breakdowns and keep being awesome. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really appreciate that. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. If there's a review you want me to watch or do, let me know. Please put it in the comment section below this video. Also, you want to watch the last episode of movie breakdowns. It's right there. Just gotta click on it and you'll be able to watch it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Love y'all. Keep being awesome.